Okay, I think uh, we're ready to go. It's uh, three minutes past uh, one. Uh, I'm delighted to be here um, and welcome you to another uh, Food for Thought. Uh, it's the 2nd of December. There is another Food for Thought coming uh, next week. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, initiative series which was started by my colleagues uh, Caroline, uh, Andrea and Anish. And uh, the purpose is uh, to offer some uh, very interesting, uh, thought-provoking uh, short interviews uh, and of course Q&A uh, sessions with industry leaders. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Kos Andriopoulos. Uh, I'm a professor of innovation and entrepreneurship at uh, uh, the business school, formerly known as uh, CAS, as well as the Associate Dean for Entrepreneurship. Um, today, we will talk uh, about something which is uh, very interesting, and I try to make the title as uh, trendy as possible, uh, In Search of the Next Big Thing. Um, and I believe that the, the title is uh, super trendy, and of course, the, the, our, uh, uh, let's say, guest uh, is very knowledgeable of this. So I'm quite excited uh, having uh, Vasilios uh, Katsos. It's my pleasure uh, to have you here, uh, Vasilios, with us, um, who has uh, a very extensive uh, background in terms of starting the, um, in terms of uh, taking over the family business. Uh, growing the business uh, uh, wildly and making it wildly successful, and then uh, selling this uh, to one of the most uh, prestigious uh, private equity uh, groups in the world uh, called the uh, BC Partners. Um, he currently serves, uh, Vasilis currently serves as the chairman and co founder of uh, VNK Capital, uh, which is uh, an entrepreneurial private equity. Uh, um, let's say firm that invests into uh, innovative startups, real estate, uh, tourism, medical tourism, uh, food and beverage, healthcare, and of course, uh, uh, pharmaceuticals. Uh, I have loads of questions, uh, Vasilis, for you. Uh, so uh, I, we have to actually uh, go through all these questions and I'm sure that we will get more from the audience. Uh, so I will keep an eye uh, on all the questions that are posted on uh, the Q&A area. Uh, so the first question that uh, I would like to ask you is, I know that you have taken over the family business. Uh, you, you were extremely young when this thing happened. Uh, so take us through, you know, this, uh, this journey uh, quite quickly. Well, Kostas, thanks for, uh, for, for the invitation. I hope uh, I'll take the challenge and hope to, uh, uh, to, to meet the expectations of the audience. Uh, so as far as concerns your question, uh, the decision was rather simple uh, in, in my case because uh, I belong to the second generation of the company. So uh, I was um, kind of destined to, uh, to follow the, uh, the business or uh, destined or uh, learn how to like to be destined to, uh, to do so uh, in a nice way by the family. So it was an easy decision. Of course, my original plans were totally different in the beginning. Uh, I wanted to uh, uh, to finish on a pharmacy school at the beginning and then go to a business finance, uh, business management uh, course, uh, work abroad, and somewhere at the age of 35, uh, get back home and, uh, and start doing um, the, uh, taking over uh, or working with the family. Uh, but it's exactly what um, we used to say in Greece that when a man is making plans, God laughs with that. So uh, I was rather unfortunate with my sister practically to lose our father uh, at the age of 20, when I was at the age of, uh, of 20. And we had to rush into taking over something that we had absolutely no idea what business, uh, running a business would be. And that was it. That, that's what brought us uh, in the picture. Okay, that's, uh, that's a fascinating story and uh, it's interesting. What I would like to know from you is that you have taken over the business quite uh, abruptly and you have uh, actually turned this business into something which, is, uh, which was, and it is, widely successful. So what are the things that uh, an entrepreneur needs to know in terms of making this, uh, of having this journey? Of course, all, all these are things that I, I, I had to learn from the, um, uh, from the course, uh, and I can say about those now. Uh, now. At that time, it was uh, nothing more than a pure energy, just go for it and, uh, and, and just keep swimming. Uh, so today I can say that uh, practically the basic principles is that you have to understand that it's a long, uh, a bumpy way. And in most of the cases, it can also be a lonely way on that. So buckle up and be ready for the, uh, the challenge. And the second thing is that if you want to win, uh, always be prepared to lose. And that comes in, in a course of, uh, that's something that, that should be back in, in the back of your mind, both no matter what, whether you're uh, having a deal, uh, it's a deal making. So you know, both parties needs to be a winner in a, uh, in a deal. That's a good deal. Uh, both parties should be uh, feeling that they lost something 
uh, but equally they gain something. And also uh, make sure that you understand that what you're, the travel that you're embarking on uh, might not have an end uh, or could not have an end or a happy end at the end of the day. And uh, the last thing is that when you're, uh, in most of the other cases in this, uh, in this road, uh, road trip, uh, there will be cases that you'll fall. Uh, and one could say always the usual thing, just be prepared to get up. Uh, but we should not forget what is very important in entrepreneurship, that there might be cases uh, where you don't have to get up, uh, and that's called the stop loss. Uh, and then there is a thin line between whether you need to get up again and at what time you have to uh, stay down. And of course, there was an excitement uh, because uh, you sold uh, the, the company. So you exited, basically. Uh, you started exiting in 2015. So this has been a couple of years uh, that, is, uh, that the exiting has been happening. Uh, and then instead of, uh, instead of enjoying yourself or going on holidays, uh, you did uh, something else. You started uh, your own uh, private uh, equity, uh, let's say, firm. So why did you start the VNK Capital? So you have to retire. I don't want to retire. Uh, <laughs> listen, uh, 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 all this success came uh, at the age. I mean, that was five years ago. So I was 43, 42. Uh, and my sister, very close to this age. So we both decided that it's not the right time to stop for us. Uh, and uh, if I link it with what I said before, uh, because we are prepared to lose. Uh, so we're not afraid of, uh, of starting up again uh, in uh, industry agnostic uh, areas of making, uh, repeating or uh, perhaps uh, uh, failing uh, success uh, on that. So we are back in, uh, in the usual uh, uh, entrepreneurial arena, which we like very much and keeps us challenged. Absolutely. So talking about entrepreneurs, uh, we say a lot of times, you know, uh, uh, what is the entrepreneur's superpower? So what is your superpower? Hmm. Uh, challenge. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, right from the very beginning, uh, I, I was always intrigued uh, and super powered uh, when people were telling me, no, this cannot be done. Uh, I was, I mean, I, I, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I didn't accept, uh, I, I, that was something which I didn't accept. And frankly, to me, that is the, if, some, if everybody tells you that this cannot happen, this is exactly what you should do. Because if you do the opposite, then you're in commodity business. And we all understand that commodities don't make money uh, mm -hmm. at the end of the day. And there's no huge success in commodities uh, other than investing in commodities uh, as an asset management. Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, I, I do find the challenge of, um, of making things that other people think that they cannot happen. Okay, that's amazing. And let me turn this around. What is your greatest weakness? Oh, day-to-day -day business. Uh, that, 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 that is something which I find that I'm not very good on. Uh, on. Um, and, I've, uh, and that's why I've always tried to have the best, I could, uh, the best people around me or the best I could afford at any time uh, around me, uh, which eventually turned into uh, an upside for our businesses because uh, this is what is an investment, investable company, a company that, is managed, uh, that, is, uh, that has a super management or a, a management that, uh, that it meets the expectations and the anticipations uh, and that's what adds value to, uh, to the company uh, or uh, otherwise a company that is surrounded by family or personality or whatever uh, might be doing extremely well, might mm. be doing fantastic, but it's not yeah. investable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And since we are talking about a, a very uh, lengthy journey, uh, your journey, uh, is it possible to build a successful company without burning out or damaging other parts of your life? Life, such as family, health, uh, etc. That's a firmly no answer. Uh, <laughs> there is no free meal, uh, and uh, um, I mean, if if you want to aim high, you have to understand that that comes with some personal cost, uh, and there's no other way on that. Uh, I was blessed to uh, to have uh, in this trip. I was blessed to uh, to have with me uh, an excellent wife, which managed to to uh, uh, bridge the gap between. Um, uh, my absence in, uh, from, from the family and, and the kids and keep the, uh, the patrimonial uh, presence uh, intact. Uh, but that comes with a cost. To be honest, if I were again to take this decision, at that time, I had no reservations about the decision or I couldn't understand the decision. If that uh, comes today to take the same decision, I'm not sure what the answer would be. But definitely that comes with a huge cost. Of course. And uh, there is a very interesting question uh, from the audience. Uh, uh, so 
because we're talking about uh, always, uh, you know, going after a challenge. So what are the major lessons that you have learned from uh, your setbacks? Because if we are uh, going after a challenge, there is a likelihood that uh, sometimes we'll hit a wall, right? So or we may fail or we may not reach, uh, you know, the, the goal. So what did you learn from these setbacks? Uh, I, I'd use the, um, uh, the, the classic uh, answer of if you're going to go fast, go along, get along, uh, go along. If you want to go uh, long, uh, get a team with you. Uh, so that, that is super uh, important, frankly. And I've never felt, uh, I was never afraid of, of getting sharing uh, profits, sharing um, success, sharing anything. And I never looked on how much the other guy would make or the other party would make. I would, uh, I would only be focused in how much value does that bring to me. If the other gains more, I'm super happy. Uh, if what I'm getting is enough, uh, meets my expectations or my goals. Uh, so to me, that's the most important. Uh, be prepared to share. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, uh, in terms of, uh, and now, you were an entrepreneur, now you're an investor. Um, how do you measure success? Or what are your metrics in terms of assessing whether you know, an opportunity is interesting for you? Um, uh, first of all, uh, 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 I think it's, a, it's a two different questions. If I have to measure success in terms of looking backwards, uh, the answer is very, very simple. I don't. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a gambler. I'm not, I'm not gambling, but... Um, uh, the very few times that I, I gamble, I find myself that whenever I'm just, you know, counting the chips and uh, looking how much I have, uh, this I've always lost. Uh, so I, I believe that success is something you don't need to count at the end of the day. Uh, yes, of course, uh, the uh, you, you need to, uh, in the course of, um, uh, of, of moving forward, you have to look back and put your, your, your line. But if I have to put a metric to that, I would say that at the point where you start enjoying the trip rather than the destination itself, that's a success. Uh, that, that means that you are already successful in that. And let's not forget uh, that in this trip, uh, in the entrepreneurial trip, there are, in most of the cases, the, the time that you will succeed something, you will not have the time to enjoy it and really celebrate it because immediately at that time you have to jump to the next project uh, and the next big success to prepare your next big hopefully big success so that's something which you take pleasure out of it uh, but you I don't think you should start uh, counting the chips now when it comes to measuring the next big project uh, whether it's successful or not in my view I always depend on analysis uh, and uh, and getting all the reports and uh, everything done diligently and, and stuff like that. But I never invest in a company. I never consider an investment in a company. If I don't feel in my stomach, you know, a crunch and saying, uh, it's, it's the gut feeling saying, oh yeah, uh, we could do that. And then we can do this. And so if you don't dream, if something doesn't excite me to dream on something different, mm -hmm. uh, that's to, to my simple view, it's, I, I, it's not worth looking at the analysis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, of course. Uh, and in terms of uh, actually uh, assessing the teams, um, first of all, what do you love about your team, the team that you had either in uh, Pharmathen or uh, VNK, VNK Capital, or uh, in the teams that uh, you plan to invest? So what makes you excited about you know, your people or the, the people in uh, potential, let's say, investment? I love fresh teams, uh, a team that is not resilient to, uh, to changes, a team that is confrontational. Uh, I hate the yes sir approach. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I like to be confronted. I like to, um, to hear the no, because I think that this is, uh, uh, or within a company, uh, to, to be confrontational in a good way, uh, not fighting all, all the day through uh, day, uh, day stuff, but practically um, filter, analyze, confront, challenge uh, cases and situations. I think that this is what gives the greatest um, value to a company uh, and keeps a management team alive uh, and a dynamic uh, approach to that. I like young teams. Uh, and uh, to be honest, uh, the uh, in most of the cases of recruiting, I've always recruited people, not what they've done, not fatty positions held in the past. I've always recruited a, a, a person looking at the personality, of course, the qualification uh, for the job, but the personality itself. 
So uh, the, uh, what I found is that frankly, anybody that is uh, uh, a fresh and dynamic team is much more uh, successful, can be much more successful than a very thoughtful, very rigid, uh, old school uh, management team. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, in terms of, let's say, in developing a team culture, um, so if we, if you have to come up with three values to describe the culture that you want to create, what will this uh, be? Uh, integrity, mm -hmm. uh, consistency, and continuity in what they do and what they say. Uh, I find that these three values are uh, hard to find, uh, give you an even harder and longer way to succeed. Uh, but these values provide a sustainable uh, trip to any company. Okay. And in terms of uh, today, you have the journey, but you're looking, uh, uh, looking, we are looking into the future. Um, what currently motivates you? Um, what motivates me? Uh, to sort out, uh, first of all, uh, dreams. Uh, I, I'm a person that I want to move forward and be able to have uh, challenges that I can think of the next day, the day after, I think ahead. Uh, and to me, this is, uh, that, that's the motivation of moving forward. That's the motivation of looking at any company or any asset, any uh, personal or professional. Uh, and that's the, uh, the most important thing. And one thing that motivates me and challenges me um, uh, moving forward is, uh, of course, all these assets that we have, uh, these companies that we have invested uh, and doing the best on, uh, on those. But practically what motivates me more and excites me is the facts that I don't know, all those uh, uh, things that I don't know. Um, I find the tech uh, sector extremely interesting. I don't know anything, to be honest, about this, sec uh, this sector. I cannot understand it at that, at that time. I love the, uh, the, the sectors of um, uh, the traditional sectors, or uh, more industrial, the more commercial uh, sectors. Uh, but I do understand that the, the tech sector is the one that is uh, it's going to be booming over the next year. It's taking over what, whatever is, uh, anyhow, it's going to be uh, game changing. And I want to know more about it. I want to be part of it in uh, moving in the future. And that's, that's, that's my goal for the next time. And uh, how, does, uh, how do you prepare for this? Because it's exciting to actually think about uh, something. But how do you go about learning more about the tech sector or the sectors that uh, you are interested in? There are the usual, the, uh, the usual tools. I mean, get the best, uh, be part of uh, committees, be part of uh, boards that do uh, and that, invest in other people that, uh, in other in funds or whatever that uh, deal with that. Uh, but there is uh, what I find also I, I recruit people that uh, uh, know more than uh, on that, which I find very important. And I've always done that. Uh, never, never be afraid to say that you don't know something. Get somebody that knows much more than you, mm -hmm. uh, but the more important thing to me is talking, uh, talking to people uh, and, and be around and try to understand, filter what you're, uh, what you're saying, what is happening and try to be part of it. Yeah, it's interesting that you're saying about talking because uh, a lot of entrepreneurs uh, uh, are, are quite, uh, they find it hard to talk to strangers uh, and or people who are not in their immediate, let's say, network or people who are not uh, from their function, educational background, culture, you, you name it. So how do you or what is your advice in terms of overcoming this uh, initial fear of talking to somebody whom you don't know? There are good times of, of your life that you have to be talking. To, it's better to be talking to yourself uh, <laughs> or restrain your talking. And that's uh, that's a virtue sometimes. Uh, but I find very important for an entrepreneur to be extrovert. Uh, you need to share your experiences, you need to share your, your thoughts, your agonies to some extent, uh, yeah. some you should keep it to yourself, uh, yeah. but uh, uh, that will give you the opinion to, to listen what others are doing. I don't know uh, 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 when we decided to invest in, uh, in the food sector, I didn't know anything about the food sector, we didn't know anything about the food sector, we got people mm -hmm. that knew the food sector within VNK, uh, we brought in uh, talent, we brought in team. But we spend a lot of time talking around to the market, talking, uh, talking around to the industry expert. So we shared experiences, we gained experiences, we filtered those experiences. And thank goodness, I mean, we, we uh, fueled them whatever we thought it was right. We fueled it back to the company and it's doing great. The same in other sectors, the same way. I find it very important. You have to be extrovert.
Okay, great. And in terms, there is another question. Uh, in terms of your view about the frontier of financial advisory and uh, AI or technology. So wh what do you feel about this? If we look backwards, uh, if we look, look forwards, uh, the AI, frankly, it's going to be taking over uh, the all, all the most of the value uh, creation uh, over the next years. There's a lot of money to be made from investment, uh, for, from investing into these technologies. Of course, a lot yeah. of money to be lost uh, because not all, all of them are successful. Uh, but yes, it's going to be a game changing. Whether it's going to be socially uh, a game changing uh, or to the best, uh, we need to see. Uh, whether all of those will be um, making money at the end of the day, a self-sustained financial uh, institutions, uh, I believe that most of them will fail uh, eventually in a sustainable course, uh, but some will be game changers and profit proving. Uh, there is uh, what, what drives the value today is the expectations uh, mm -hmm. on all the AI companies. I'm not sure what it's going to be when the expectations are met. And that's, mm. that's a challenging part. Uh, and to be honest, this is what I'm trying to understand. Yes. There is another question about uh, whether you have made any investments in uh, cybersecurity. Oh, is another yeah. interesting uh, trend, and especially for, uh, for most of us uh, who are now remotely working. <laughs> yes, that's a good True. question. Unfortunately, I did not, uh, is the answer. And I say unfortunately uh, is because I thought that we had the time to. Uh, all this COVID situation just pushed uh, uh, the, the fast forward button on, on everything. Yeah. So uh, in our original expectations, that was something to deal two or three years down the line. We still have the time to do it, uh, but COVID was faster. Mm -hmm. Okay, there are a couple of uh, more questions, but before I actually go to the questions, I wanted to ask you something about the exit. Uh, why did you exit? that time because a lot of entrepreneurs don't know when is a good uh, time to exit you know they may say i'm exiting in a couple of years or maybe i need to exit a little bit earlier it's trending now investors are here i don't know about the another two years whether investors will be interested because there are those kinds of trends right but in terms of you i mean wh how why did you make this uh, choice uh, at that time pharmafin was uh, an exciting company with a uh, really double-digit growth, um, uh, growing fantastic double-digit EBITDA uh, margin on the top of the, uh, the agenda uh, for uh, in, in the uh, niche pharma sector that we were uh, targeting. So everything was uh, debt-free, uh, fantastic. Everything was, was great. Mm. There was one thing. The company was already too big for its shareholders, uh, and the company was far larger than its shareholders. So I do find that a dangerous path. And I do believe that uh, when a company is growing, it should, there should be a, a balance of sustainability with the size of the company and the size, the, the muscles of the shareholders. So what we did change, frankly, with, the, uh, with this partial exit uh, from Parmathen was bringing in the balance, bringing in the muscles within the company to make it a far greater company uh, on that. Today, Parmathen is, uh, is definitely a company which is, uh, its value is well over a billion uh, compared to what it was, it's almost double, if not more than double than what it was. And I'm really happy for that because I know very well that even we applied the same technology, the same strategy, not a lot of things changed, nothing changed from the management, but we did not have any reservation to push the button, uh, uh, to push forward. And in any other case, we would do exactly the same things, yeah. but we would might be, well, you know, kind of, oh, should we do it, should we not? That's not allowed. Uh, if you have a right plan, you have to stick to that and push forward. So that's what we resolve with the, uh, um, the partial exit. Absolutely. Thank you so much for answering this. I have uh, two more questions. We have three minutes. So the first one is from a colleague of uh, mine. Um, and of course, everybody agrees with AI and uh, taking over the value creation. But then the question is, uh, what will people, uh, what is the role of people uh, <laughs> if, if technology takes over? So and what is the timeline that we have in mind in terms of uh, AI and technologies taking over? Uh, the time is irrelevant uh, mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Whether somebody wants to put a five years or 10 years or seven years, I think we can argue for hours on that. And when I say that the time is irrelevant, if we think that uh, if we look backwards and say that uh, the last hundred years, uh, it took hundred years for, uh, uh, for our society to come from uh, um, 
from a horse to um, uh, electric cars and uh, from all the technology, it took us a hundred years and practically it's going to take us 10 years in, uh, to reach or five or seven or 10 or 15, whatever. It's irrelevant whether, what, what the time frame would be, but it will be within this context. Uh, just to, to answer that, whether it's on, on the good thing of the society. Uh, listen, when I started looking at, um, trying to start reading uh, some articles, books, whatever, about AI, uh, I felt like, uh, you know, a kid that was uh, closing, uh, uh, was terrified by reading a book and just shutting it down because I couldn't understand what the, the social consequences of that would be of, of AI taking over. Yeah. Uh, and partly I still feel the same on that. Uh, of course, you, to whomever you talk that deals with AI uh, tells you that, uh, you know, things, uh, things will be different. Uh, you know, people will be doing different things uh, and finding new uh, job creations, which is true in a way. Uh, even on the uh, Industrial Revolution of the world, we had the same, uh, the first Industrial Revolution, we had the same uh, fears uh, as society. Yep. Things worked out. Uh, so I guess um, not being wise enough uh, to say how but I guess that we'll sort it out uh, on, on this road. We've done it two times already. So I think the third one will survive through that, hopefully. We'll, we will do it again, right? So, <laughs> so uh, final question. Uh, and, and because we're talking about the society, you know, communities uh, and the world, um, most entrepreneurs are becoming more philanthropic as they acquire wealth. Um, what is your, uh, your, your uh, do you have any plans? Uh, are you thinking about it? Uh, we would love to hear your views on this. I, I find imperative that uh, you give back to the society uh, and you share a part of your success because a, a, a good part of your success became, uh, came because of the society. So that's a, that's a two-way thing. Uh, on a personal note, uh, I find that philanthropic actions are the ones that you enjoy and the ones that you know best of. Uh, I'm not a fond, I, I'm, I'm more fond of the uh, CSR level one or two uh, mm. uh, actions and not spawn so much of the CSR actions that are, uh, you spend more money advertising those uh, than actually spend on, uh, on on actions. And I'm using a CSR, it's not uh, for corporate actions, but also for personal actions. I'm just giving this um, uh, this, uh, this example. So uh, I do find it imperative, you know, just to, to answer shortly, I do find it imperative you give back to the society. And I do find that the best value is the value that you, you give to yourself and your family and not what it's widely known or widely spread out. Okay, absolutely. Uh, Vasilis, we are on time. It's uh, one past, uh, it's, uh, sorry, it's uh, half past one. Uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, being with us uh, today. Uh, we enjoyed having you and uh, learning from you. Um, so one final thing before you, you go away. One piece of advice for somebody who wants to start and grow uh, a business. One single piece of advice. Think twice again before you do it. Uh, it's going to be painful. Uh, but if you take the decision, you're going to enjoy it like hell, no matter what the success or the failure would be. Uh, so I mean, don't, never be afraid of, of trying. Uh, there's no, uh, I mean, you, you never get the answer if you don't raise the question. So, so raise the question, take the decision, move forward. Uh, it's a beautiful ride. And I would like uh, to leave uh, everybody who is uh, following us with these thoughts. Vasilis, thank you so much uh, for uh, being with us uh, today. We really enjoy the insights and looking forward to seeing you again in future events here at the Business School. Thank you. Russell, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a good yeah. day. You too. Bye-bye.